Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome back to this Friday's episode of Sports Corner. I'm Cole Young, and since I was gone last week, there's a lot to catch up on. So, let's get right to it. Starting with golf, the 88th Masters Tournament at Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia, came to a close on Sunday the 14th. Thursday through Saturday, the leaderboard was a tight race, with several golfers being tied for first place throughout the weekend. Scotty Scheffler, Max Homa, Ludwig Oberg, Colin Morikawa, Bryson DeChambeau, Tommy Fleetwood, and more all had a chance to take home the green jacket entering the final round. But after a few tough holes on Sunday, some of the players' scores dropped, except for one. Scotty Scheffler ran away with the tournament on the back nine of the final round. Scheffler carded a final round four under 68 at Augusta National Golf Club for an 11 under total, four strokes clear of Ludwig Oberg, who finished second. Scheffler earned his second green jacket in the past three years and his ninth PGA Tour title. The reigning Masters champion then became the first player since Tiger Woods to win four times in a five tournament run when he came out on top of the RBC Heritage earlier this week at Harbor Town Golf Links in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. It should come as no surprise that Scheffler is the current number one golfer in the world and it seems like he'll hold that position for at least a little while. This past week was also the start of playoffs for the NHL and NBA. Here's a look at the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs bracket. Our local LA Kings are starting their playoff journey against the Edmonton Oilers, and Edmonton opened up the series with a whopping 7-4 victory over the Kings. In Game 2 on Wednesday night, Anze Kopitar scored 2 minutes and 7 seconds into overtime to give the LA Kings a 5-4 win against the Oilers and tying the series at 1-1. Game, game 3 will be tonight at 7.30. The Carolina Hurricanes and New York Islanders series has been must-watch TV so far. Carolina took Game 1 3-1, then jumped out to a 2-0 series lead Monday night after a wild Game 2. The Canes were down 3-2 with a little under 3 minutes remaining in the third period. Carolina proceeded to score twice in 9 seconds, followed by another goal just a minute later, completing the three-goal comeback and defeating the Islanders 5-3 and taking a 2-0 series lead. Game 3 was last night, and the Canes are now one game away from completing the sweep after another victory. A powerhouse matchup of the Florida Panthers and Tampa Bay Lightning has been electric so far. Florida narrowly outlasted Tampa Bay in Game 1, winning 3-2. Game 2 was no different as a 2-2 tie sent the Lightning and Panthers into overtime. Overtime didn't last too long though when a goal by Carter Verhage 2 minutes and 59 seconds into overtime would give the Panthers a 3-2 victory, bringing the series to 2-0 with Florida in the lead. Game 3 of this series was also last night, and the Panthers earned a win on the road in Tampa and are one game away from completing the sweep. Another major matchup to watch is the reigning champion Vegas Golden Knights taking on the top-ranked Dallas Stars. Vegas was able to pick up a huge victory in Game 1, followed by Game 2 Wednesday night, where Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marchessault each had a goal and an assist for the Vegas Golden Knights, who extended their lead in the first round with a 3-1 win against the Dallas Stars. Here's a look at the schedule for the remainder of the weekend. Tonight, we get treated to four big games, including the Kings fighting for another win in Game 3 with the Oilers at, like I said, 7.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday are loaded with action and big matchups as well. And I say it every year, but playoff hockey truly is one of the greatest spectacles in sports, so be sure to tune in to as many games as possible throughout the entire Stanley Cup playoffs. If I had to make any predictions, I'd say Florida looks pretty close to unbeatable, but it would be cool to see Connor McDavid and Edmonton hoist the Stanley Cup for the first time since 2006. If you aren't watching the NHL playoffs, then you've probably been watching the NBA playoffs. So far, it's been hard to watch for our local Lakers. In their first two games, the Lakers held a lead over the Denver Nuggets for at least two or three quarters, but those leads were blown in the end, and the reigning champion Denver Nuggets have continued their dominance including a buzzer beater shot by Jamal Murray to win Game 2 for Denver. Game 3 was last night, and the Nuggets are yet again one game away from sweeping the Lakers and advancing to the next round after a victory in L.A. in Game 3. The winner of this series will go on to face the winner of the Phoenix Suns and Minnesota Timberwolves. That series currently sits with the T-Wolves up two games to zero after they won both games by double-digit margins. Game 3 will be tonight. The other California team, the four-seed Clippers, are in a battle with the Dallas Mavericks. LA set the tone in Game 1, coming away with a 109-97 victory over the Mavericks behind a 28-point performance from James Harden. The Mavericks even the series at one game to one after a 96-93 win on Tuesday night. Kyrie Irving had 23 points and Luka Doncic had 32, spoiling Kawhi Leonard's return to the court after not playing for the Clippers since March 31st. Game 3 will be tonight at 5 p.m. Today is also Game 3 of the Bucks and Pacers series, and after the Bucks beat the Pacers by 15 in Game 1, Indiana got their revenge in Game 2. 
The Pacers scored a plethora of points and walked away with a 125-108 to win over Milwaukee to even the series. Pascal Siakam led the way again for the Pacers, dropping 37 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. Siakam is the first NBA player to open a postseason with consecutive 35-point, 10-rebound performances since Wilt Chamberlain in 1967. Like I said, Game 3 is today at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Then on Saturday, we will see the matchup of the number one Celtics continuing their series against Miami, the Cavs and Magic squaring off in Game 4, the top-seeded Thunder heading to New Orleans, and the night will end with the Nuggets and Lakers. If I had to make a prediction, I would have to say I believe the Nuggets and Celtics will be the last two teams remaining in the finals. There's playoff hockey and basketball every day for the next few weeks, so like I said, be sure to watch as much as you can. Sticking with basketball, the WNBA draft took place earlier last week, and as a surprise to literally no one, Caitlin Clark was the first overall pick and will play for the Indiana Fever. A few of the other major players from this year's March Madness bracket were also selected in the first round, like South Carolina's Camilla Cardoso and LSU's Angel Reese, both being picked up by the Chicago Sky with the third and seventh picks, respectively. Chicago is already looking to be a team to beat in the WNBA next season. Last, and certainly not least, continuing on with drafts, yesterday was finally the first round of the NFL Draft. I said it before, but this year I truly had no clue what would happen in day one of the draft. Other than Caleb Williams being the clear choice for the Bears at number one, it was basically anyone's guess what would happen after that. It got even weirder when the Broncos made some odd moves before the draft, like trading for former Jets quarterback Zach Wilson. That further confused myself and I'm sure a lot of NFL experts and scouts, as it was assumed Denver would make a push to get one of the year's top quarterbacks in the draft. Anyway, like I said, no one could have accurately predicted what would happen yesterday, but here's a look at what went down. As expected by me and most of the world, quarterback Caleb Williams out of USC did get selected first overall by the Chicago Bears. Chicago also boosted their offense even more when they selected Washington wide receiver Romo Dunze with the ninth pick. The biggest shock of the night was the Atlanta Falcons taking Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. Remember, the Falcons just gave Kirk Cousins a four-year, $180 million deal. So, going quarterback in the first round is a little strange. A new record was set in this year's draft. Six quarterbacks were taken in the first 12 picks. After Caleb Williams heading to Chicago, Washington selected Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels, the Patriots went with UNC quarterback Drake May, and Minnesota drafted national champion J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. The final quarterback taken in the first round was Oregon's Bo Nix by the Broncos with the 12th pick. The Broncos are hoping they have finally found their franchise quarterback. The Chiefs also traded up to secure a new wide receiver target for Patrick Mahomes, and they got the receiver that broke the 40-yard dash record with an insane 4.21. Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy is going to shine in the Kansas City offense. The Chiefs secured this pick after trading with the Bills, who eventually traded out of the first round entirely. The first round was a whirlwind, and rounds 2 and 3 begin today at 4 p.m., with rounds 4 through 7 starting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The first round is the true spectacle and the most exciting part of the weekend, but I still recommend tuning in throughout the rest of the weekend to see which teams get what players. Some major talent can still be found in the later rounds, and prime example is Tom Brady being drafted 199th overall in the sixth round of the draft, and we all know what happened after that. With all that said, there's so much to watch and enjoy this weekend, whether it's hockey, basketball, the draft, baseball, golf, soccer, etc., etc. And next weekend is one of the biggest sporting events in the world, the Kentucky Derby. I'll be sure to preview that on my next show, so be sure to come right back next Friday for more news, updates, and highlights from all across the sports world. I'm Cole Young. Happy last weekend of April, and I'll see you next week. Uh -huh.